we've got 12 of the Michael crosses here um, and nearly all of them were found in the churchyard surrounding the church which is quite uncommon I think. This one is no the only place it's known to have come from is from the churchyard wall. It was on the churchyard wall at some point um, and then was taken inside and and it's a really nice little cross slab. It's clearly the head of a cross there with the limbs out here. So it's only part of a cross. It would have been much taller originally. From what I gather from the experts who know about these things, they say this central figure could be the figure of Christ. It certainly has what's called a nimbus over the head, which looks like a hairstyle. And if it is a nimbus as such, then that can de designate a saint or a very important religious figure. The cross was known as the crucifixion cross for, for quite a while. Nowadays, it's called better known as Grimm's cross or Grimm's slab. Um, crucifixion because of this figure. Um, but there's no evidence that there's actually a cross you know, as such other than the, the main cross behind it. So it could be Christ, it could be a, another religious figure with arms outstretched in, in the form of giving a blessing. So it, it certainly would appear to be a religious figure of some sort, an important one. If this is the figure of Christ, then it's quite an unusual cr cross for the island. There, aren't, there are very few crosses on the island which depict Christ on them. And it could be a very old depiction of Christ because later uh, depictions of Christ tend to be a naked Christ or just with a loincloth on where if it is Christ there's clearly clothing on which actually dates it as a very old. Um, other things that might hint to that are the cockerel up in the, in the top left corner here which may well represent the cockerel that was crowing when Peter uh, denied <laughs> being connected with Christ. So that could be the cockle. And on the right hand side we've got a figure here which appears to be an angel, it's certainly that type of figure with wings on, wings on the back. So we have the angel there, we have the cockle over here and may well be, could well be Christ in the centre. So this is the other side of the cross and you can see there's the head of the cross is still here, the same as the, uh, as, the, as the other side of the cross. And it's mainly with interlacing on, and you can see the beads on the interlacing, these little circles here. Um, but we do have some intricate interlacing up, up in the top corner there. It's said to be in dragon form, but, um, and more interesting really is over on the side over here, there is a figure on this side of the cross two legs, arms over here, and the head which has got a little bit eroded up here. Um, above it is an eagle. Uh, so we have the tail, we've got the, uh, the wings up here, and the head is coming over here. So the eagle appears to be holding the head of the figure be beneath, which is strange, it could possibly be one of the Norse sagas or the, or the poems, the Icelandic poems, etc. Um, and we have a figure which could be uh, a person which could change itself into an eagle. And the eagle would stand at the end of the edge of the world, beat its wings and make the winds move. Um, but it was, the, the name actually also means a corpse swallower and it could be that it's grabbed a figure and has taken it away. On the other hand, there is a cross on the figure. So whether that indicates it's Christ um, being carried away uh, in Ascension or some, something like that, I'm not sure. <laughs> so on the first side we looked at, we have what does very much appear to be Christian symbols. Uh, but on this side, we certainly may well have the uh, Norse mythology being sh shown on the cross as, as well as the interlacing. And that's interesting because we have Christian crosses with pagan figures and gods, etc., shown on these. On the side of the cross, there are lots of lions and a cross and what appear to be twigs and 
little circles. And what we've got here is runes. So the cross bears a runic inscription. Um, going reads from the bottom to the top of the cross to mark the end. Um, and it's been uh, deciphered to of Grim the Black. So hence sometimes known as Grim's cross or Grim's slab. Why of Grim the Black? Well, we can only conjecture really that the cross was raised in memory of or to celebrate the life of um, someone who was perhaps father of Grim the Black or daughter or son of Grim the Black. We'll never know, but something along those lines. <laughs>